Okay, folks, this is really wild, and I must say I'm frankly a bit disappointed. Personally, up until now, I've placed quite a bit of trust in Apple and especially Anthropic, given that, according to them, ethics is one of the main pillars of their company. Anyway, folks, let's have a look at what I'm talking about, and then let me know your thoughts in the comments so we can get a feel for what you guys think about these AI giants. So basically, Proof News found out that some of the top AI companies like Apple, NVIDIA, Anthropic, which are, well, interestingly enough, known for their tight-lipped policies on training data sources, have actually been using content from thousands of YouTube videos to train their AI. Yep, you heard that right. Despite YouTube's strict no-go on harvesting material without permission, it seems the rules haven't stopped these giants. The scoop reveals that subtitles from a staggering 173,536 YouTube videos were secretly used by these Silicon Valley big names. I'm talking about Anthropic, NVIDIA, Apple, and also Salesforce. They called it the YouTube Subtitles Dataset. I mean, we're talking about educational heavyweights like Khan Academy, MIT, and Harvard, plus big media like The Wall Street Journal, NPR, and the BBC. Even late-night TV shows weren't spared, because it seems they even used The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, and Jimmy Kimmel Live to train their AIs. YouTube celebrities like Mr. Beast, with a whopping 289 million subscribers, Marcus Brownlee, Jacksepticeye, and none other than PewDiePie, also had their videos tapped into, with hundreds of their videos used for AI training. Then folks, check this out. Some of the data used to train AI also promoted conspiracies such as the Flat Earth Theory. Now, if you're interested, Proof News has created a tool to search for creators in YouTube's AI training dataset. You can use it right from the article itself, and I'll leave a link in the description. Anyway, David Pakman, the host of The David Pakman Show, a left-leaning political channel boasting over 2 million subscribers and a whopping 2 billion views, shared his concerns. Imagine this, nearly 160 of his videos got scooped up into the YouTube subtitles dataset, and no one even asked him about it. He's not alone in his frustration because Pacman, who manages a team of four producing daily videos, podcasts, and TikTok content, and more, argues that if AI companies are getting paid, creators like him should get a slice of the pie, especially since some media giants have started inking deals to get paid for their content used in AI training. I mean, it seems like there's a burgeoning market for AI training businesses. I have my doubts, but let me hear your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, Pac-Man emphasized that this is my livelihood, pointing out the massive effort and resources poured into his productions. Basically, he's calling it straight-up theft. And Dave Wiskus, CEO of Nebula, a streaming service run by its creators, echoes the sentiment because he slammed the practice as disrespectful, highlighting a growing fear that generative AI might soon replace artists, layer by layer. Now, Wiskus didn't mince any words. Quote, Will this be used to exploit and harm artists? Yes, absolutely. Meanwhile, over at Eleuther AI, the folks behind the dataset, there's radio silence. They haven't responded to any allegations of using videos without permission. Their website paints a noble picture of democratizing AI development, but the creators caught in the crossfire feel otherwise. Interestingly, the YouTube subtitles dataset sticks to just that, subtitles. No video imagery, just plain text, sometimes accompanied by translations into various languages like Japanese, German, and Arabic. But the question remains, at what cost does this technological advancement come? Now, let's peel back another layer of this complex situation, folks. According to a research paper by Eleuther AI, the dataset in question, dubbed The Pile, isn't just pulling from YouTube because this massive compilation includes diverse sources like the European Parliament, English Wikipedia, and even a collection of emails from Enron employees unveiled during a federal investigation. But here's where it gets even more intriguing. The pile is pretty much an open book. Anyone can tap into it. It's not just the academic and indie developers making use of this resource because tech titans with deep pockets like Apple, NVIDIA, and Salesforce have also dived in. They've openly discussed using the pile to power up their AI systems. For instance, Apple used it to train OpenELM, 
a high-profile AI model which I talked about some weeks ago, just before announcing new AI features for iPhones and MacBooks. Even Anthropic, an AI innovator backed by a hefty $4 billion from Amazon and known for its commitment to AI safety, admitted to using a snippet of YouTube subtitles from the pile for their state-of-the-art AI Claude 3. Jennifer Martinez from Anthropic clarified, YouTube's terms cover direct use of its platform, which is distinct from use of the pile dataset. As for any potential breaches of YouTube's rules, she deferred to the creators of the pile. Now, it seems that Salesforce isn't shy about their use either. They say their AI model built on the pile was for academic and research purposes, as noted by Kaming Zhong, VP of AI Research at Salesforce. He even released this model to the public in 2022, and it's been a hit, downloaded over 86,000 times. But it's not all smooth sailing. The Salesforce team cautioned that the pile includes some problematic content like profanity and biases against certain genders and religious groups, which could pose vulnerabilities and safety concerns. Proof News also stumbled upon plenty of profanity and offensive slurs in the YouTube subtitles section. Responses from other major players? NVIDIA kept mum, while representatives from Apple, Databricks and Bloomberg stayed silent on the matter. Now, folks, let's talk about the YouTube data goldmine and let's dive deeper into the AI data drama. Jay Vipra, an AI policy researcher at Vargas Law School in Rio de Janeiro, revealed some interesting details on the fierce competition among AI companies. Basically, they're all scrambling for the highest quality data, a vital quest and the reason that they often decide to keep their data sources tightly under wraps. Earlier in the year, the New York Times unearthed that Google, which owns YouTube, had been using the platform's videos to train its models. Well, Google's response? A spokesperson clarified that this use was above board, covered by agreements with YouTube creators. Hmm, nice move there. But Google isn't the only one in the spotlight. The Times also noted that OpenAI might have used YouTube videos without the green light. OpenAI's reps played it coy, neither confirming nor denying these claims. Even when pressed by the Wall Street Journal, OpenAI's chief technology officer, Mira Murati, responded saying she was actually not sure about that. Then Jay Vipra pointed out why the YouTube subtitles and similar speech-to-text data are so prized. They're veritable gold mines for training AI to mimic human conversations. But it's not just about utility, because it's a matter of principle too. Dave Farina, host of Professor Dave Explains, with 3 million subscribers and 140 videos snagged for the YouTube subtitles, voiced a common concern, basically saying, if you're profiting off of the work I've done, which could potentially put me out of work, then we need to talk compensation or regulation. Adding to the complexity, and this is wild, folks, YouTube subtitles compiled back in 2020 also features subtitles from over 12,000 videos that have since vanished from YouTube. Then, in a poignant twist, one creator even wiped their entire online presence, yet their contributions linger in numerous AI models, which I think is pretty crazy. Now, efforts by Proof News to connect with affected channel owners mostly hit a wall. Many didn't respond, and those who did were clueless about their content being used. Among the unsuspecting were the teams behind Educational Powerhouse, Crash Course, and SciShow, part of Hank and John Green's video empire. Then, folks, the plot thickens as Alex Resner, a contributor for Proof News, unearthed a staggering detail in a report from The Atlantic last year. Basically, he discovered that the Books 3 dataset, part of the infamous pile, contained over 180,000 books by renowned authors like Margaret Atwood, Michael Pollan, Zadie Smith, all of which had been used without permission. Now, because of this, they made a series of lawsuits against AI companies, accusing them of copyright violation. If you're wondering, these legal battles have mushroomed, leading to the removal of Book 3 from its hosting platform. In these lawsuits, giants like Meta, OpenAI, and Bloomberg have shielded themselves behind the argument of fair use. One notable case against Luther AI, the entity behind scraping and publicizing the books, was dropped voluntarily by the plaintiffs. Yet, with many cases still in their infancy, the issues of permission and compensation hang in the air. But you know, folks, despite being taken down from its official site, the pile lingers on in the shadowy corners of file-sharing services. 
I mean, there seems to be some paranoia brewing because full-time YouTubers are now on constant vigilance and they are issuing takedown notices to guard against unauthorized use of their content. I think this is happening because there's a pervasive fear that AI might not just replicate their style, but could soon churn out exact copies. You know, folks, David Pakman experienced this firsthand. He stumbled upon a TikTok video purported to be Tucker Carlson, but was shocked to find it was a voice clone reciting his own words. The deepfake, eerily mirroring his speech patterns, had fooled almost everyone. Only one person recognized the deception. Pac-Man's reaction? He warned in a response video saying that this is going to be a problem because you can do this essentially with anybody. Adding another twist, Luther AI's founder Sid Black admitted on GitHub that he had scripted YouTube subtitles to download via YouTube's API, mimicking how a browser would during normal video viewing. His method, detailed on GitHub, used 495 diverse search terms ranging from funny vloggers to quantum chromodynamics and even flat earth. Despite YouTube's clear terms against using automated methods for video access, over 2,000 GitHub users have shown support or bookmarked black script, revealing a complex mesh of interest and controversy surrounding AI's use of sourced content. I mean, I think it's really sensitive stuff, folks. Anyway, if you want to know more about OpenELM, the AI I mentioned earlier that Apple used stolen stuff to train for, you can watch this video where I talked about it a few weeks ago. That said, folks, I have to admit I'm pretty flawed and disappointed. I mean, AI can certainly be an incredibly useful tool and is indeed revolutionizing certain industries and aspects of our daily lives. However, I also believe that ethics, responsible use, and especially the protection of people should be top priorities. But let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. As always, see you in the next one, folks. You all take care.